Hey there folks, welcome to another train simulator video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Machine Rail's latest uh, edition of another American built, American used, uh, narrow gauge locomotive. This of course is the Cook 280 uh, for, you're going to get Colorado Southern. Uh, Denver, Leadville, and Gunnison, and then two uh, factory schemes or paints, if you will. Uh, this is the number 46 here in front of us, the Colorado Southern. Uh, over here to the left is the DL and G, Denver, Leadville, and Gunnison. Uh, now, the pack is uh, classified as 1883 DSP and P, which is Denver, South Park, and Pacific Cook Consolidations. The 280 is known as the Consolidation. Uh, for those that may not be uh, aware. Uh, but the railroad, the, the narrow gauge stuff in Colorado, always kind of the same, it, 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 you know, from one point to the next. Um, they, they changed hands, owners, names, all that good stuff. Uh, anyway, this bundle, you can go pick up on their store for $12.00. Dollars and uh, if it's anything like the Mogul Pack, the 260, that is well, well, well worth it every penny. Uh, I did take a look at the Moguls, the 260s. If you have not seen those and you'd like to know a bit more about them, I recommend going and checking out that video um, that I did a few weeks back when they released that. Uh, in that, I went over a bit more history as well uh, for the railroads that these things served. I'm not going to do that as much today. going to try to stick to the the basics this time as much as I can, although I know I, I do tend to ramble on and on. Um, but anyway, again, they were assisted by Digital Traction and Caledonia Works. Uh, they, of course, are narrow gauge. Uh, you're going to get four units. Like I said, it's 3D mesh with real scale. Um, they use the original blueprint uh, for specifications to create within the game. Uh, it says they use real water and fire consumption, authentic sounds, and that sound is very nice we're hearing right now. Cab as well. Uh, you're going to get working lights, smoke box door, just like on the 260, and class lights, which I think is new. I don't think the moguls had those. Anyway, it's... Uh, it's nice having a 280. The 280 was like, you know, from the 1870s on, the 280 was like the most, let's get out of this pile of wood here, one of the most, if not the most popular, uh, you know, say at least freight locomotive used in the states and abroad. Uh, they were used everywhere. Um, Denver, South Park, and Pacific got 20 of these bad boys. Uh, Baldwin built nine, uh, and Cook of Patterson, New Jersey, East Coast, um, built the remaining 11, uh, which they got. Uh, it eventually became, you know, Denver, Leadville, and Gunnison because uh, the South Park line, you know, fell on hard times. Foreclosure happened, you know. It was snapped up by other people, and form the DL and G. That's what you have here on the 208. But, you know, it's all essentially the same railroad for the most part. I think like way later down the line it became part of uh, Burlington Northern. Like way way down the line. Um, but anyway, that's a long time from now. But uh, one of these do remain in Colorado. I believe number 191 built by Baldwin. 280 of course. The, uh, the oldest loco in Colorado. I think it's at the Colorado Railroad Museum. Uh, it was as of several months ago. I'm not sure with, you know, latest pandemic, endemic, all that, whatever. Who knows? I don't know if it's it's still there, still operable, or whatever. But uh, they do have one. It is Baldwin and not Cook. These are Cooks. These are not Baldwins. But they were essentially the same. Uh, these two 80s. Had about 13,000, well, about 13,000 and a half pounds of tractive effort uh, that they could put down. The tender held 1,600 gallons of water, 5 tons of coal, and these bad boys weighed about 112,000 pounds overall. Um, but anyway, I don't know if I mentioned it. The 260s, the moguls, the, the ones that we looked at um, uh, about two or three weeks ago, those were essentially for passenger duties. 
the two eight O's were the workhorses of the lines. Um, these were your freight engines, the two eight O's. I didn't really mention it last time. Uh, it just dawned on me this time. This stack here, this was called a Congdon, and it was essentially built to arrest sparks. So I know personally when I think of like an old timey steam engine, you know, that's what I think of is that stack right there. And that over there. Um, they were essentially just spark arresters, you know. Wide open places, they could start fires, towns, buildings, homes, everything was made out of friggin' wood and paper and, you know, burning things. So, you know, it was good to arrest the sparks. That's, that's why they were built uh, in such a way. But uh, anyway, Colorado Southern formed in 1898 after the South Park line. And then, of course... Um, I think it was formed to the Colorado Central in the South Park line. And then Denver, Leadville, and Gunnison uh, formed and used the old South Park stuff, line, stock, all that, uh, because they were bought from a foreclosure. I think I mentioned that. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's what we got here. So let's take a look. We got some logs on this bad boy because uh, a lot of these were definitely used for timber and lumber. Look at the pilot slash cow catcher here. Again, it looks really nice, really crispy. Um, it's just really nice work. No, no corners cut. It's just really sharp. Uh, I mean, these these guys, as far as I'm concerned, you know, them and their diesel brethren, uh, diesel workshop, or you know, bang for buck spot on for train sim stuff right now without a doubt I mean if, if you know most of the developers could put stuff like this kind of caliber out that you pay uh, considerable coin for on the steam store uh, you know we we'd, we'd be in good hands overall but luckily we do have a, a few developers out there that, that still make some really good stuff and these guys are 1000 percent in that group. Uh, I was very much impressed with the moguls. Um, I had a feeling this thing would be just as good, and it is just by looking at it here. Got the plate on the front, complete with the Patterson, New Jersey on there. Number 46. The numbers look fantastic, as well as the color. Kind of light gold. Not too shiny. Smoke box door. You know, it's a, it's a bit weathered. It's gray, black, steel, you know. I mean, just looking at these nuts. These nuts. Haha. <laughs> these rivets. Nuts. I mean, if you want a rivet count, this is your doggie right here. These studs down here. It's just, it's so clean. Very nice. Very, very nice. Pilot wheels. There's a steam chest. There's their little uh, their little plaque. I like their plaque. That thing looks good, man. They uh, the guys over at uh, Diesel Workshop, you know, kind of their their brothers in arms, have uh, been putting these on the RS3s as well. The driving wheels. These wheels look really good. The driving rod as well. You know, it's just got crud all over it, grease, all that good stuff. Man, these nuts. <laughs> I gotta stop saying that. These bolts and these nuts look really good. They really do. I mean, that is sharp, man. Oh. These bearings here. Just, just the coloring on there is just so nice. So nice. These wheels are fantastic. I just... There's not much else I can say. I mean, the stuff looks amazing. These guys didn't cut any corners. They, uh, I love the, uh, the little grease can here. That's cool. They had these on the 260 moguls as well. Even this thing, I kind of foamed over it in the other video. Like, the detail on this, this squirt can here, it's crazy. This thing is tiny. If I can get on it here. Look at that. That could pass for real, you know, under like certain lighting conditions. 
100%. But uh, the thing is nice. It's got these gymungus headlight. Go ahead and pop that bad boy on. There we go. And what a color, man. Like, to me, headlights and train sim are a big deal. It's, it's part, you know, they're always on. If, if the locomotive is operating, the headlights are on. So you're always going to see it. You're going to notice it. So, it, you know, it, to me, if it looks good, it's paramount. It, uh, it's a big deal. Big deal. But they do look good. I like these little, uh, kind of hand turned leafing things on here as well. That's nice. That's nice. Got the steam dome and the sand dome. Even look at the whistle on this sucker, man. The springs down there. That's so nice. So nice. We'll go ahead and pop that one off. Um, it sounds good. It is a good sound. There's no denying that. Uh, I just, I think it could be a little bit louder. I'll go back here, out in the woods. Back here with Sasquatch. Okay, that's too far. <laughs> so it is dynamic, you know, in the distance. It's, it's a good sound. Um, I just feel like it's a little bit too quiet, maybe, in the way it just cuts off, like... You can almost hear, like, an audible click. I'm not going to dwell on it. Like, this, the sound is good. It, you know, the main thing, I just wish... I would like it to be a little bit uh, louder. Plus, I'm partially deaf anyway, so that's my excuse. Another emblem on there. These look really sharp. Look at that, man. If only. You know, these guys deserve high praise. And uh, I I hope they get it. It's it's totally justified, in my opinion, because this stuff is just really nice. And, and on the uh, North American forefront of train sim, like, we... We don't always get the nicest stuff, so, you know, the fact that these guys are making these things, and they're not charging an arm and a leg, they're not making you sacrifice your firstborn child, uh, you know, none of that. Like, it's, it's good stuff at a good price. Check out the bell. The bell's pretty quiet, too. I remember the 260 had that issue. Uh, I think they patched it since. I haven't checked it. Uh, but I believe they patched it on the 260, added some flags up there on the pilot. Um, just a little bit quiet. You look at these tanks, they, they remind me of beer kegs. They look very nice. Some rivets on here. And again, the nuts and bolts. Ay, ay, ay. And the stack. Dude, it, it's just amazing when I see something like this, you know, and I have to kind of pinch myself and remember this is Train Simulator and not another title or game. You know, they look so good. Top plate's all scuffed up here. Brake pipes. Cruise over here, see if anything's a little different. Whoop. Whoop. We are all up in it. There we go. Westinghouse Air Brake Company, Incorporated 1869. That's so nice when you can read these plaques and builder's plates and stuff like this. It's got all these dates on it. Jesus. That is pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Just a cool looking engine, too, man. The 280. Not too big, not too small, you know, just right, I guess you could say. But it's a darn good looking sucker, man. Check the tender out. I put it on the correct way. Hallelujah. 
the uh, the mogul video I did complete with dumbassery. I, uh, <laughs> I when when I was in the editor, it somehow flipped around. It is the right way on this time, so thank God for that. I mean, the tender looks equally good. These little bearing boxes down here for the Earl and the grease. God, even those look nice, man. These trucks, the leaf springs. This is gorgeous. The chains, the friggin' chains. Like, something like that to be rendered, you know, cannot be easy. All the different angles and whatnot. But it's just... Like, when you can't normally get up this close to stuff on train sim, you know. You know what I mean? Uh, and it look okay. And this does. Very, very nice. Got your coal back here. It's a good looking little coal fill too. It's not, uh, you know, too bland or too light colored. That's some good quality coal right there. Very nice. Got the lantern back here. God, even that lantern, man. Some really good stuff. The handbrake. Look at this handbrake. Look how ornate that is, man. Jesus. Cheese and crackers. Let's hop in the cab here. So just like the moguls, wham bam, thank you, ma'am. Front and or front door and the side and front window open, all in one, which is pretty cool. It looks really nice in hill here. We'll go ahead and uh, open the smoke box door, which you obviously wouldn't want to do while a steam engine is in operation. But there you go. Pop that puppy open, just like the moguls. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. You know, it's I don't I don't think it's a gimmick. It's one thing to like, you know, say a developer built something for Train Sim and it's kind of not that great, and then you know they may build a gimmick on top of that. Like, this is not that. This is already a very badass bit of kit, and then you get like a cool little thing like that to do as well. So, so it's not gimmicky at all. Uh, J bar and throttle all these different valves I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna pretend I don't know what half of these dials and valves do but again just like the mogul man sitting in here with the uh, firebox good god it had to be hot in this thing got your Westinghouse builders plaque on there as well looks very nice that brake handle just good looking stuff man the lantern There's our uh, sander pole. The gauges, Westinghouse gauges, those those needles, just so ornate. It's gorgeous. Got our oil lamp over here. Click that off and on. I don't think L works. Yeah, if you hit L or shift L, it doesn't do anything. But if you just, you know, just like in real life, you know, you'd have to turn it on. There's no shortcut to turn it on in real life. But uh, that's pretty neat, you know. Just another little addition that uh, is pretty cool. The injectors. The rear door. Now, don't mind this weirdness going on. This is my FOV. I like, I like being way back in the FOV, so. Down here. The firebox. I, th I got it on auto fireman, so I don't think it's going to let me open it. Which, which is fine and probably better off because of it. Look at these brake gauges, man. Man, oh man. Can open these as well, just like the mogul. Got our nice little shovel back there, or spade, if you will. Little guy. Alright, so that was a straight stacker. The DSP and P Railroad, Denver, South Park, and Pacific. Um, and the the build, you know, how they would have come out of the factory, this is what they would have looked like, you know. Very nice. And they look good. A bit of color, you know. The uh, the color on the cab and the, uh, the engine itself. The wheels, of course, being a different color, you know. They look good. It's nice having a bit of color. Just the the ornateness again with the numbers and the uh, the hand turn leafing and striping and all that. 
That's just cool as hell, man. Looks good as well. It's going to be pretty much the same cab uh, from what I know, so there's really no need to go in there, I believe. DSP NP Railroad 65. The the numbers and letters are really good. You know, they're not they're not like the sharpest thing. They don't look like 8K or whatever, but like from this distance, they're damn good, you know. Uh, can't say the same for a lot of, you know, a lot of the swill we get shoveled onto the Steam store. Uh, not not by a long shot. It's number 63, both both the uh, as delivered here. This one's got the black cab, of course. That one, I don't know if that's just supposed to be like raw wood. Or if it's like cherry or some kind of lacquer or paint or something on there. You know, but little minor differences and they look amazing. They really do. It's just, you know, I, I'm not particularly into steam engines as much as I am diesel electrics, but stuff like this, you know, it's just art in motion. Yes, that sounds cheesy, but uh, they are, you know, they're cool as hell. Just watching these things belch steam and smoke and the uh, the piston, you know, doing its thing and the driving rod and the driving wheels, everything moving all in unison. It's a beautiful thing. These couplers look pretty nice, too. I, uh, I believe they're made in-house. Um... Never really looked at those before. Those look pretty good, though. Anyway, let's hop in one of these son of a guns. Uh, now, as much as I think it's cool having this lumber pack from the Clear Creek uh, lumber pack expansion, the physics are weird as hell. The things are like, the things are like lighter than light. They're like negative weight. They, like, weigh so little, you know, it's almost like a vacuum. It's weird as hell, so we're not going to drive that one. Um, we're going to use the OG uh, rolling stock over here from Clear Creek. Hop in this bad boy. Make sure we are on, on the line. There we go. Let's get out of Dodge. Go ahead and pop that light on again. Nope. Let's try it again. There we go. Something else you'll get with these is these markers, these lanterns. I don't remember if the Mogul had these or not, but uh, again, the model. These guys do work, man. These guys do work, and they do it good. Those are nice. Everything about it, you know, it's like there's nothing that seems corner cutty, you know, or. Time, time stress, deadline, nothing like that. Like, it's all, it's all gravy, you know? It's very nice. All right, let's get rid of the brakes here. Open the, uh, cacks. Cack. There we go. For a little bit of juice. This is downhill out of here, so, uh, probably get away from us. Try not to let it. Oh, listen to that. I'm going to try and keep my gob shut. Just listen to this. Ah! The hell? Who's this guy? Freaked me out. I've never seen that character before. Hey, scary looking. probably shut those now yeah so the bells on like I said you know if I could I don't even I don't even want to gripe I don't even want to call it a gripe but if if I were to gripe it'd just be the the sound level of the bell and the whistle the bell more so than the whistle I mean I know there's a lot of you out there that are like 
techno, you know, wizards and all that good stuff can probably fix that. I can't. I just have to live with it. It's all right, though. like a handbrake on or something? Maybe I sat here for so long that I like broke it somehow? That's nice, the uh, the little click there, not under steam. Yeah, we're going downhill here. Aye. Alright, these are our lapping brakes. Try and back up here and push back up the hill because this is a pretty significant grade 1.5, you know, for the engine and the times. Apply some more breakage. If I uh, like broke something, let's see. Wait, I can't do the. Uh, can't look at auto fireman. Hold on. Let's see, it says the sanders on. There we go. Can't click the blower. Just seeing what I can click here. All right, let's try and back back up the hill here. Minimal reverser. There we go. Now it says wheel slip, but they're not actually slipping. Um, you know, obviously not seeing any movement. The, I guess the the physicality of it is there, technicality of it, but the wheels actually aren't spinning. Put some more uh, reverser into it here. So that's maxed out. I think... Did I break this thing? Hold on a minute here. <laughs> Hold on a minute. We're going to shut this mofo off here. Put some uh, some handbrakes on. Should probably do that. I 
Okay, so let me actually shut it off here. I was able to shut the mogul off, I think. So that's when I hit Z. It's definitely still ticking though. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go out here and uh, turn off the auto fire and see what happens here. All right, so I tried going back out, turning off auto fireman. It was a total nightmare. Uh, we'll save that for a, a blooper reel one day. Um, I'm kidding, it was deleted. Uh, but it was horrible. You know, I, I'm not good with steam engines, not by a long shot. We're on a considerable grade uphill now. We're going back uphill to where we were. Uh, we were going downhill. You know, I'm, we're getting somewhere now. It still did the wheel slip thing without wheel slip. But what's funny about the sound is it's just got that kind of like chuffing at idle sound while we're moving. But you can still hear the, uh, you know, kind of the chuff noise as you're moving. So I don't know if there's like two audio files mixed up. I don't know if that's legit. That should be happening. Um... There's some wheel slip again. Back off a little bit. Come off the reverser. So you can vaguely hear it. Uh, you know, steam generation rate's going up. Steam usage rate uh, is going up. Cylinder decocks are closed. Brake pipe pressure looks good. Uh, blower on, dampers are on. I. I don't think that are those supposed to be on all the time I thought that was like not a always on deal uh, but I don't remember the mogul having this sh issue uh, with the sound I'm gonna have to go back and check it out um, and see what happens here uh, like physics wise it, it seems pretty good like you actually got to watch what you're doing you can't see the wheel slip but it most definitely does happen uh, so you got to be nice and gentle on it. Uh, fire mass, 682 pounds of pressure. Let's see. Steam chest pressure, 147.7. Boiler pressure, 147.7. Give her some more juice. I just, I don't know if I'm using enough steam and that's why it's like venting it off. So we're moving now. It, you know, it does have the moving chuffing sound, but uh, it, it's it's fairly quiet. Um, a little better. Oh God, we're almost there. All right, so maybe that was the issue. Maybe it was just for the fact that I wasn't using enough steam, so it's it's got to do something with the steam if you're not using it, and that's dump it out. I really, really need to uh, take a oh god, a class of sorts, and and figure out how to operate these things, because I'm not doing them justice. I'm really not. Um, I feel like I had a an okay. Uh, session with the mogul um, but this thing I, I feel like it it feels a little bit different for whatever reason I'm not sure like I said I'm, I'm no I'm no steam engine operator just from a, a, a purely you know physicality aspect and look and sounds and everything while the sounds are a bit low it all still sounds really really nice I'm going to try and work on this and uh, see if I can figure something out here. Maybe maybe try and take like a 
few minute firecracker course, you know, and to try to operate one of these things to actually do it justice. And then I'll come back, because most likely it's just me not not operating the thing. But it's good. It's as good as the Mogul, easily. But it's cool, because it's 280, you know. But uh, anyway, great video. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time. It's, uh, it's pretty nice, though. Um, I just got to figure out how to operate the thing. Anyway, quick look, as always, is, is the angle here. But uh, that's it. I got to dive into this thing and see what I can figure out. But uh, that's it for now, guys. I'll see you next time.